Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today on a Friday morning. Hoda's getting a jump on the weekend. Craig decided to come in a little early to help me out. Thank you so much. And we've got a lot to talk about on this Friday. We're covering our top stories around the globe from Tokyo, where in just one week at this very time, Mike Tirico and I will be in Tokyo. We'll be hosting the opening ceremony. It's going to be live on our air at this very time one week from now. Tom Yamas is there for us this morning. He's going to have the latest on the final preparation. And then to South Africa, where week-long demonstrations over political corruption and devastating economic conditions turn deadly. NBC's Kelly Kobiea is live just outside Johannesburg. In the meantime, in Paris, the Eiffel Tower is reopening today as the City of Lights is showing some new signs of life. Molly Hunter is there live. But we're going to start here in the U.S. and this startling rise in COVID cases. Los Angeles this morning once again requiring masks indoors, even for the vaccinated. And the Surgeon General has issued a new warning about vaccine misinformation, calling that a public health crisis. NBC's Gabe Gutierrez in a hard-hit Memphis, Tennessee this morning. Things so bad there. Doctors are calling for an investigation into the state's handling of the epidemic. Gabe, good morning. Bring us up to date. Savannah, good morning. Tennessee now leads the nation in the number of new COVID cases per capita over the last two weeks. Some of the remote counties around Memphis are seeing a sharp rise. Some of those patients are ending up here. This morning, as the highly contagious Delta variant spreads, new changes from rural areas to big cities. Los Angeles, the nation's largest county, is taking a step back, requiring masks indoors, even for the vaccinated, effective Sunday. At Yankee Stadium in New York, positive COVID tests forced last night's game against the Red Sox to be postponed. Aaron Judge. Citing unspecified sources, ESPN is reporting slugger Aaron Judge, who played in Tuesday's All-Star game in Denver, is one of six Yankees to test positive. And here in Tennessee, infections are up more than 340 percent in just two weeks. What's disappointing this time, of course, is that it is so avoidable. And now a longer wait for the 48 million children under 12 and their parents who were hoping to get their kids vaccinated by fall. The FDA will now review several more months of safety data, meaning a vaccine for kids likely won't be available until early next year. Meanwhile, the U.S. Surgeon General, who lost 10 family members to COVID, is issuing his first health advisory, urging Americans to help fight misinformation. Today, we live in a world where misinformation poses an imminent and insidious threat to our nation's health. A recent study finds that two-thirds of unvaccinated adults believe major myths about vaccines, from causing infertility to changing your DNA. Not true. But it's feeding vaccine hesitancy as cases rise. In Arkansas, the state's vaccination rate is just 35 percent. Were you skeptical of getting the vaccine? Yes. Why is that? Because it was it was not proven yet. Tate Ezzy and his wife didn't get the shot, but the couple and four of their five kids tested positive for COVID. She was placed on a ventilator while pregnant and lost the baby. Tate's wife survived, but he now has this message for those who think the pandemic is over. I want other people to hear my story, so maybe they will think twice about not getting vaccinated. The CDC director now says that Tennessee's decision to halt vaccine outreach to teenagers is, quote, incredibly disturbing. Savannah, as you know, a top state health official here says she was fired after she sent a memo to physicians outlining a state policy that allowed minors to seek medical care without parental approval.